Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Warfighter from Danverson Games. Warfighter is a sort of modular series of tactical card-based squad combat games. And the main settings they have available right now are Modern or World War II, but in theory at some point they'd like to take the system into fantasy and also into the near future. But Danverson Games sent me both the World War II set and the Shadow War set, which is uh, in the modern setting, but kind of stealth operations at night. And I polled our Patreon members and they voted for Shadow War. So I'm going to show you a playthrough of that. It is a bit more complicated than the base system, but not too hard to handle. I'll walk you through it. Like always, we'll start with a bit of setup and basics of play, but use the timestamps and skip ahead if you like. And if you like what you see, if you like the content at One Stop Co-op Shop, consider joining our Slack, supporting us on Patreon, or listening to our weekly podcast. Now let's get into Warfighter. Warfighter is a very modular system that gives you a lot of control over the type of game you want to play. And in that vein, you start setup by deciding what mission you want to do and what you want your objective to be. Your choice of mission, in effect, becomes how long you want your game to go because they'll give you how many resources you have to spend on your squad and also how much time and how far away your objective is. So you could do an extremely quick game like Go Go Go, which will probably take you 20 to 30 minutes, or a much more intense one like Nice and Easy that could be a bit over an hour. I wanted something kind of on the simpler side of the middle, so I'm doing Move Out. And your mission will tell you how many resources you have to spend on your squad, like I said, what time to start at, where to place your objective in terms of how far it is from your starting point, and also any modifier for your squad's loadout, how much stuff your squad members can carry. You also get these activity and confusion values as will come into the stealth element I'll explain later. And some have a special effect. Here it's going to be easier to get into all locations in this mission. So I go ahead and put that right there on the mission spot of the board. Next, I have to decide what the objective of my mission is. Am I trying to take out a VIP, uh, stop them from escaping on a helicopter, destroy a gunboat? And I think the gunboat one sounds fun. So for some objectives, you just have one card, but some have an embedded card here. I actually have the gunboat I have to destroy. I'm going to put these cards on the spot indicated by the mission. It said number four, so I'll put the actual objective card there, and I can put the gunboat above it. But I'll mark both of these with inactive tokens, basically until I'm next to this location and I decide that I want to activate and kind of put it into play. They aren't going to do anything. They're just markers for where I'm trying to get. Now, both of those are standard for all versions of Warfighter, but for Shadow War, I'm going to have to also pick my insertion and extraction method. Insertion methods tend to have different positives and negatives. So like going in by Blackhawk would push the objective back one location. If I went in by Parachute, I'd have to have a certain shadow ability for all my soldiers. But I'll go for a hit. Halo Parachute, uh, I have to pay resource points equal to the objective's location number, so I'll have to lose four resources, so I'll have 38 instead of 42. And I just put it there to mark that I have chosen it. And Extraction is a bit more intense because it'll determine what I need to do to actually get out once I've accomplished my objective. So for example, if I have an Amphibious Escape, I'll have to have this card and the previous card have no enemies on it, which can be pretty tough. But the one that I tend to like is a Hummer. I just have to keep it clear of enemies for two turns in a row and I escape and win. You can just put that to the right of your objective. They do have a spot for it further to the right on the board, but clearly we don't need it right now. And like I mentioned, your mission will tell you how much time you have. So this mission told me to put the timer on the 10 space and I shuffle my main card deck, the location, in this case I'm in North Korea and the big action deck. I also shuffle my hostile deck. Now for most versions of Warfighter this would just have a plain back but here you have this whole like revealed unrevealed mechanic for the enemies. I'll explain that when I get to the basics of play. And a couple other things specific to the Shadow War version. I'm going to put my noise token on the bottom space here. I'm going to put the enemy status token on the on duty space. They're not alerted yet. Now we get into what can be the most fun part of setup, setting up your squad. And remember, you're going to get to use the resource points given by your mission, in my case 42. But because of the insertion I chose, I'll only have 38. And even in just the base game, you have a lot of options for how you want to do this, and everything will tell you what its cost in resource points is in its upper right-hand corner. In terms of soldiers, you have player soldiers, which have no little label here. And you need to include at least one of them. They're basically the leader of your squad. You can also recruit non-player soldiers and also squads that are a lot easier to kind of utilize and cost less points but can't do as much cool stuff. In my case, for my main soldier, I'm going to pick a fairly cheap one because, again, I only have 38 to spend. Williams costs 12 resources. We'll get to what this other stuff means in a minute. And to back him up, I'll include Santiago's squad. He's a really strong, close-range fighter, so if I outfit Williams with some explosives to take out the gunboat and maybe a longer-range weapon, it should be a nice compliment. 
And that's already 22 resource points out of my 38, which means I've got 16 left. And characters will often start with equipment and skill cards for free. In this case, they both get night vision goggles, which basically all of these soldiers get in this version of the game. Now for the rest of outfitting, I don't have to worry about my squad at all. They just have their inherent attack abilities. You can't boost them at all. They never run out of ammo. They're really easy to manage. But Williams can have up to a loadout of 11 points. And how much something weighs is generally equal to its cost. So if I got him, for example, this law rocket launcher, which I probably will for the gunboat, just one expendable rocket would cost three of my resource points. Again, I have 16 and three of his 11 loadout. So let's start there. I think I need to get him at least uh, two rockets, even though that's going to use up a lot of his capacity because the gunboat can only be hurt by explosion attacks, which means my uh, squad can't injure it at all. It needs to take at least three damage. So I need some firepower to make that happen. So most weapons will get a bunch of ammo for free when you buy them, but the law is a single shot thing. So for each three I spend, I get one rocket token and it will use up three of my loadout. So there we go. That's six of my 16 points and six of my 11 loadout. Now I said I wanted my main soldier to have better range than my squad. So I've got two options here, I think, for that. An M14 sniper rifle. This can do devastating stuff at one or two range away, but it's terrible at close range. Or if I don't wanna go that extreme, I can get an M16A2 rifle. Yeah, I think I like that one. The sniper rifle makes too much noise. Now do note for a second that some things have a different loadout value than their cost. So let's use up five more of my resource points. That's 11 out of 16 total with the law rockets, but it's only four loadouts. So I actually still have one loadout left for Williams, which is pretty important because don't forget he has these night vision goggles that come for free, but they still use one of his spaces. So he's fully kitted out, but I still have five resource points to spend. And something you can buy that doesn't use up any of your loadout are skills. So I could, for example, make him a marksman, which would give him a better chance of hitting with all his weapons. And I could make him more silent to sneak around or even get stealth kills with a knife. In my case, I do like the marksman ability. That'll help him hit with the rocket and with his rifle. Now for his last two points, let's look at ammo. In most versions of Warfighter, you just get the ammo indicated. So I just put six ammo tokens on this rifle and I'd be good to go. But because this is a stealth mission, you have different types of ammo. If you just fire regular ammo, you make a ton of noise and the people will be on you in five seconds. So you can either for one resource point each get some black ammo, which does not lose any penetration on targets, but is still quiet. Or for free, you can substitute subsonic ammo for regular ammo. It is quiet, but it has terrible penetration against uh, protected targets. So with my last two points, I'm going to buy two black ammo. I'll sub out two subsonic ammo. And I'll have two regular ones for if stuff hits the fan. But I'm going to start out firing the black ammo, of course. All right, so there we go. That's my full squad's kit. I take these little soldier markers and I put them on the different members to indicate who's who. My leader is one and Santiago's squad is two. And I put the second copy of those tokens on the mission card, which is also your starting location. You never actually go on the insertion card. It just marks any special abilities that might apply. You take the four tokens for each of the soldier numbers you're using, in this case, one and two, and put them in a bag or a cup or something to draw when enemies target you. And finally, something again unique for Shadow War, you put these little unaware target tokens in a bag or something to draw from as well. And you're basically good to go, but as a final step for each regular player soldier you have, in this case, one for me, you take their health value as a hand of cards. So here I'm gonna have six action cards to play around with at the start. You also put action tokens next to each soldier. The default is two, but some soldiers get more. For example, you see for Santiago's squad, when he has two health, this is a uh, leftmost values is uninjured side. Then he has three actions. He'll go down to two if he takes a damage. Now for Warfighter, I'm actually not going to do a basics of play section because there is a lot going on in this game. And I think it'll make more sense if I just kind of explain it as you go. But in a very basic sense, you have a soldier turn where you get to use your soldier's actions and also play action cards from your soldier's hands. Then you have a hostile turn where you might spawn more guys. They might walk around if they don't know where you are. They might go for the alarm and ruin your night. And after each of those full turns, the timer ticks down one. If all of your soldiers are defeated or the timer goes past one before you've completed your objective and extracted your team, you lose. But again, the rest I'll talk about as we go, and I think it'll make a lot more sense that way. All right, so we're in our first soldier turn, and a key thing is, you'll see, we don't have any way to get to the objective yet. We need to find locations to put here, locations that we like or we have time to deal with, to actually advance to the gunboat and destroy it. And in the action deck are these location marker cards that get you locations, but I didn't get any. 
So let's use Williams' first action. This is a common thing to do. And I can discard as many cards as I want. This is called a discard and draw action. And redraw up to my hand size, which is my current health, which is six. But if you had damage, it would be less. So I'm going to get rid of all of these, even though some of them are very nice, because I need to find locations to get this mission going. All right, and still nothing, so we're going to do it again. And there we go. We finally got one, so we're going to discard this and replace it with the top location card. Okay, in this case, it is a forced labor farm. That doesn't sound like a very nice place. Let's go over some of the key characteristics. This is the reinforce roll, the chance that an enemy will pop up here. The higher, the better. So one to four is kind of middle level. Pretty likely we won't get any extra enemies here. This is the basic entrance cost and the extra night entrance cost. You can cancel the night entrance cost by using your night goggles, which you can only use once per turn. And for the entrance cost, you subtract your soldier's move value. So if I wanted to spend an action for Williams to move in here, I'd have two costs left. And for that, you pay it by discarding cards from any soldier's hand. So Williams could help Santiago move in. But our chosen mission decreased location entrance cost by two. So as long as Williams used his night vision goggles to cancel the plus three cost here, he could move in there no problem. Location cards will also tell you how you need to play them. In this case, it'll cost one action, which is a bummer because many of these are free to play and Williams doesn't have any actions left. So we're just gonna have to wait until next turn. Structure is referred to by other cards. It's just a keyword. And distraction, this is a fun one. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any uh, bombs, but you can like leave a bomb here. And then when your mission goes south and the alarm goes off, you can set it off to distract the enemy soldiers and take them out for free. This is the number of actions it takes to get into close combat with somebody. I didn't bring any knives, so that shouldn't hopefully be happening. And then one of the most important ones, the hostile value. So for this, you look at the resource value of your squad. So mine is 42, remember? Or actually, I guess 38, which means I would draw three points worth of hostiles. And how that works is I'll look at these values here and I'll keep on putting cards down with them on their unrevealed side here until I've equaled or exceeded three. So here the first two cards would do it. But again, we'll get to that in a second because I can't play this yet. And there's not much for Santiago to do yet because I haven't placed a location down. And in this case, we can skip the entire hostile turn because there's no locations for them to pop up on yet. So we just go down to nine time, but we should be able to get a better start this next round. All action tokens get refreshed and let's make some stuff happen. So as Williams's first action, he's gonna play the forced labor farm. And again, we're gonna put three points worth of hostiles down or more. So if I had like had a one and then drawn a four, I'd still put them both down. And this is the unrevealed side of the enemy, something unique to Shadow War, and this is much tougher. To walk you through the key values here, this is a relative indication of how strong this enemy is. It's also the number of experience points the person who defeats them will get. And experience points are something that the entire squad can benefit from. For example, whenever a player character plays a card with a bracketed value, you can pay one experience to upgun it and make the card more effective. This is their potential movement value. So you roll a D10 with them at the end of the turn if they don't know where you are and they might move uh, toward you or away from you. These are their search values. Uh, if they only have one value, it's range zero, which means if you're in their space, if they have other values like this one does, they can actually look for you elsewhere. And what that means is they're gonna increase your noise if you're within range of them. So just them kind of like walking around means they might find you. These are their reticles, which is basically how much health they have. And this is their attack information, which is key to their reticles. So the more that are uninjured or unsuppressed, the worse their attack will be. Pretty much every enemy has an evade value. If you have enough experience, you can just discard the enemy immediately by spending the experience. They all have an alarm value, which tells you how quickly they'll set off the alarm if they become aware of your presence. And they have different keywords, which this guy's fearless, which means he can't be suppressed. And this guy says, pay three experience for soldiers to enter this location. Oh, this is not great. Because remember, Santiago can only attack at range zero. So we are definitely in a bit of a bad way here. Now, this guy doesn't have a search value at range one, but this guy's going to add a ton of noise if he's left. So I'm going to try to reveal him at least and see who he is. So you can just place these guys above the location they're occupying. And let's take a moment to see the action cards Williams has. So easy does it. He can play after any action makes noise to reduce the amount of noise made. You'll see that uh, moving and shooting cause noise. Steady aim. If Williams takes a shot, you can make it better. Just the wind. If a hostile thinks they might have heard something, you can make them unaware. Coordinated shot is awesome. All my characters get to make a shot for free, basically. But a lot of cards will say covert in a number or support in a number. That means you need to discard that many extra cards just to execute the card because it's so much more powerful. And finally, snapshot's gonna probably be pretty key here for Williams. This lets uh, Williams, or if you spend an experience, any soldier, remember upgunning if you spend an experience for a bracketed text, that would let them perform an attack without spending an action. So Williams already spent one action to play the forced labor farm, but uh, if we need to take one of these guys out, that will give him an extra chance. 
But I did say I want to see who these guys are. A key piece of equipment we all have is night vision goggles. Once per turn for each night vision goggles, and I just tap them to show I've used them. You can either, as I mentioned, cancel the night cost of moving into a space, or you can reveal an enemy at any range. Now to do that, you need to pay one action, one experience, or discard a card. So since Williams is pretty good at shooting at range one, I'm gonna have him do it. And he'll discard just the win, because hopefully I take these guys out before they are aware of me. I'm gonna reveal this really nasty one that makes me pay experience to enter the location. On um, this case, it is a guard post. And you'll see it's mostly the same, but it's weaker now. It only has two reticles instead of four. And I forgot to say, this is basically its armor value, uh, its cover value. You got to equal or exceed this with a D6 roll to actually cause real damage to them. And here's a really nice thing for me. Now their value for searching at range one is only three. That means they're gonna make my noise level go up by three at the end of every round. But there's a key thing from the mission card. While we only have the mission or the number two location active, which we do, noise goes down by three at the end of every round. So right now these are equal and I can just hang out this turn and I won't become any noisier. They won't find me at all. But hey, what fun is that? I've got Santiago, an awesome close range fighter, ready to go. So I think I will take a shot at this guy. And the key thing is if every reticle is either uh, killed or suppressed, which you'll see when I explain combat in a second, then abilities like this pay to experience thing become invalid. They aren't active while the person is fully injured. So that would let Santiago run in and start uh, trying to take out these guys. So Williams is gonna play a snapshot card. Unless indicated, uh, playing an action card never costs an action. And this will give him a free attack, but he still has one action left after this. Uh, something important I forgot to say, in Shadow War, whenever somebody is spawned, generally you put an unaware token on them, and that means they don't know you're there, and you also have an easier time attacking them because you sneak up on them. So in Normal Warfighter, here's how attacking works. You check your range, so here it's one, and you also choose what mode you're shooting at. It could do semi-automatic fire for one die or burst fire for two dice. You roll as many d10s as the choice you made, plus a d6 to see if you can exceed their cover. And then you roll, and after you take any modifiers, if your die equals the kill value or exceeds it for your range, so for one range away, one location away, I would need an eight. And if your d6 equals or exceeds their cover value with, again, potential bonuses, then you get to put a KIA token over one of their reticles. If only one of those two things is true, so you got their cover or you got your kill value, you instead just suppress them. And if neither is true, you don't do a dang thing. Now that's normal Warfighter. In Shadow War, you've got these unaware tokens. So whenever you shoot someone who's unaware or pausing because they heard a sound, you draw one of these first. And many of them will either give you a bonus to your attack or sometimes say you can't get the shot because you know they're talking to someone or whatever. Oh, but this is awesome. I got literally the best result. So this is an automatic kill without even needing to roll because rolling might make you have to reload your gun and I didn't have to here. Now, after drawing the token, I get to decide what kind of fire I want to use. If I use burst fire, special rules for Shadow War mean that I'll get to do two KIA results and kill the guy straight up. If I instead chose to do one, the suppressed keyword means whenever I deal a KIA, I also deal a suppressed, which means this guy would be basically frozen up for a little bit, but could come back at the end of the round and give us trouble. So I think it's too good of a deal to pass up. I will go ahead and inflict uh, two KIAs. Now, what's the difference in cost? It's all about noise for stealth. A normal shot causes 10 noise, which is absurd. Never do that. Shooting with black ammo causes five noise and my weapon is suppressed, so it's minus three. So it only causes two noise per shot. But because I chose burst, it's gonna be four noise. Now what that means is after I resolve the action, I go one, two, three, four. And this left column shows what the chance is that someone will hear me, know I'm there, and go for an alarm. This right column is what chance on a D10, so here three or less, but someone just pauses because they think they heard something. Now that only matters if someone is either in the space where I'm shooting from or the space I'm shooting to, but in this case there is someone. So I roll a D10, and no, he didn't hear anything. But since I defeated the hostile, I get two experience points on Williams. And again, I can use experience for a ton of stuff like activating night vision goggles or making action cards better. So like I could spend one experience to use snapshot on Santiago, any soldier instead of Williams. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna play easy does it after that shot to make one less noise. I'm not gonna upgun it to two because I'm about to have Santiago charge in there and he might make a noise and I don't want it to go into this yellow area where they could actually start raising an alarm. And don't forget, Williams still has an action. He could help Santiago fight, but let's send Santiago into battle. Now, I didn't show you Santiago too well, but because he's a squad, he has all his attack information right on his card. He's only got one cover, so super easy to hurt. He gets three or two actions based on how much damage he's taken. He hits on a five or a six for killing, but only range zero. He can't shoot otherwise. He only makes one noise each time he attacks, and he has a suppress keyword, so he'll also suppress them when he kills somebody. 
And Shadows 10 plus, you're about to see, whenever he moves, he rolls a d10, and if he gets that value or higher, uh, then he won't make noise. Otherwise, if he moves into a place with an enemy, like he's doing right now, and doesn't make the roll, he'll cause one noise. And his move value is two. Remember, it would cost three to get in here, but because of move out, it's only one, so that's fine. But he does need to use night vision goggles to cancel the plus three cost to move in. And we'll go ahead and discard coordinated shots to pay the one card or one experience or one action cost to use that. All right, he rolls to see if he makes a noise. He does. It's still in the green. Anytime noise happens, we roll to see if somebody notices it. Oh no. So this guy heard a noise, he flips from unaware to pauses. Thank God I played that minus one noise thing. That two edits roll would have made him go for the alarm. But he's gonna go for the alarm anyway, cause Santiago's shooting at him. And note this guy is fearless, so we can't suppress him, which means we're not gonna be able to cover both of his reticles with one attack no matter what. But let's see if we can get a good shot on him. Ah, darn it, no shot. Now the question becomes, do I just run Santiago back and not bother that guy for now? Because I lose the action with that no shot result. Yeah, and if I shoot him now and miss, <laughs> you would pause again. But if you get a second pause, he goes for the alarm. If Santiago stays here, this guy is going to increase noise by three at the end of the round. And also I have to roll for reinforcement because you only roll to reinforce on the enemy turn for places that have soldiers on them. So yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> Santiago's piece it back out with his third action. And for Williams' final action, I'm going to go ahead, I guess I'll keep steady aim, but I'm going to draw back up to my hand size. So I'll draw five new cards. Oh my gosh, three snapshots? What the heck? Oh, and a new location. In this case, it's an open lot. Ooh, this is nice. Retreat noise counter by two. So this helps me be quiet. There's no reinforcement roll here. Only a few guys spawn. This is an amazing card. So I'm definitely gonna play that to uh, get me to the gunboat. But yeah, that's the end of the turn. I don't wanna shoot this guy anymore. He's going to flip back to not hearing any sound anyway in a second. So with that said, let's explain the enemy turn. So first you have a reinforcement roll. If somebody's in a space, you take the value of the top card in the deck, right now it's a zero, and you roll a d10. And if the sum of that zero plus the number you roll is within the range, so here if I rolled a one, two, three, or four, then you spawn the guy here, otherwise you just discard that card. Next, if people know I'm there, they'll attack, but we're not there yet. But we do have to roll to see if this guy goes walking. I'm gonna roll a die. If it's a five or six, he stays put. If it's less than a five, he goes left. If it's more than a six, he goes right. Don't want him to come to where we are, please. Ah, of course he does. Hi. <laughs> okay, next, anyone who is pausing goes back to being unaware. That's good for us. And now we get our noise adjustment. It goes up three because this guy's on our space now, but it goes down three, so it just stays put, which is not what I wanted. If he had not moved, I'd be back almost down to zero. And finally, if anyone would suppress, you'd remove that. If the alarm had sounded, a bunch more guys would show up. But we're just down to eight time. Doesn't seem like we made a ton of progress, but I feel pretty good about that turn. And here's a big thing. I don't need to kill that guy. In fact, it's beautiful that he moved onto my space. I can just go into the forced labor farm, play the open lot, hide over there, and never get any reinforcements at all. This, you know, I thought this was a bad thing, but this is beautiful. And if at the end of next turn, he moves to the left again, he's just gone. He's out of the area of engagement. All right, so let's go, go, go. We'll spend an action for each of us to move in. And we'll each use our night vision goggles. So I have to discard two cards. And let's see. Paired fire, I'd rather get a free shot than a better shot. And I don't really need three snapshots. Now for Williams' second action, he's gonna play the open lot. It also costs one experience to play. So good thing I have that from defeating the guard post. Remember when we play that, we retreat noise by two. So it is down to there. Now the open lot has a one hostile value. Unfortunately, it's a zero on top. So that comes out, oh yuck, plus a three. So that open lot is not quite as abandoned as I would have hoped. By the way, we didn't have to roll for sound in that moving because no one was there. But this is not great. I might get a reinforcement roll here. These guys might walk into my space. They both have search values and I can't reveal them because I already used my night vision goggles for the turn. Now I do have snapshot cards. So even though Williams is out of actions, I could try shooting the single reticle guy. But if I miss, that's bad, bad business. So now I think I'll just stop here. Santiago won't use his last two actions. So first I do a reinforcement roll for the farm. I've got a two on top, so a one or two will make him spawn. Thank God, I just discard them. Now this one's pretty key. I gotta see if these guys move. I almost forgot again, they are unaware. So if this guy gets a one, two, three, or four, he's just gone. Yes. So bye-bye, we never even knew who you were. Now, both of these guys have a four to seven value. I would love if they got an eight, nine, or 10 and just went that way. So this one, nope, he's coming right onto us. And this other one, the really powerful one, is also coming onto us. Oh, yuck. Well, again, this might not be the worst because we can just move out and kind of pass them by. But yeah, they're gonna push noise a bit up with their search values, which are, well, I guess only this guy's a little bit higher because he's on our space. 
So that might have been good again in the end. Yeah, and actually look, it would have cost plus four for us to enter that space, plus two if he was damaged. All right, search values, they've got plus three, plus four noise total, minus three, so we just go up one. We're still comfortably in the green area. And time keeps ticking down, but we're still in a pretty good spot, I think. All right, so it's back to our turn. I'll certainly move us out. All right, so Williams, remember, has a one move value, and locations have two less, so this four becomes a two. So he doesn't need to discard one card to get in there, plus another card to use his night vision goggles. I've got three cards in my hand. That'll give me just the two I need to move in and the one I need for Santiago. His move value is enough, but he also needs to use his goggles. So that'll empty out my hand, but for my second action, I'll have Williams draw back up to six to get ready to actually attack the target. And Santiago, again, won't do anything. I'm realizing I could have just uh, spent a second action for him to use his night vision goggles and kept a card. I can play this now. Discard any one hostile card that is behind the rearmost soldier. So that is awesome. Let's play that immediately and get rid of this really nasty guy who's adding two or three noise every turn. Let's see, what else do I have? Combined fire. Everyone adds plus one or plus two with experience to their attacks this turn. That'll be great for uh, when we attack the target. Follow me, play after you or any soldier, inflict a kill with a suppressed attack, reduce all entrance costs. So we can uh, jump in to where the gunboat is if we need to destroy it uh, close up. Stealth attack, you or any soldier. Now this is a covert one, which means I'd have to pay an extra card. Same with follow me. You or any soldier with an experience may perform a suppressed attack without spending an action with plus two or plus four to the attack roll. Wow. I mean, stealth kill. Play when you or any soldier with experience declares a stealth or suppressed attack. Automatically get an attack roll of 10 and a defeat cover roll of six. I wish I could use that on my uh, explosive rocket, but I can't. And then move out. This will be good. You or any soldier may perform a move without spending an action. That can get us out of dodge, potentially. But yeah, Santiago is going to use up his two actions again. <laughs> Maybe I should have picked a different squad member. All right, so enemy turn, absolutely beautiful. They have no reinforcements in this open lot, so I don't even have to roll for it. But I do still roll to see where this guy goes. Hey, just keep heading left, buddy. No, you come back to us, we don't need you here. So he's got a one search value, which means our noise is going down by two. It's only one away from the bottommost most spot. That's a great place to be. Time goes down to six, but time is definitely on my side here. All right, so here's a question for me at the moment. I probably want to put Williams and Santiago onto the location because the gunboat has some pretty important keywords. A big one is plus one range. That means because he's out on the water, you have to act as though you're shooting one range further away. So if I'm not on his space, I'll be shooting as though I'm two spaces away with an eight to hit. Now counting my favor though, the gunboat is plus three size. That means you have plus three to hit it because it's so big. But it can only, again, be hurt by explosion attacks. And once I attack it, it's going to be going for alarm with alarm two. And what that means is uh, after two actions, basically, where I don't kill it, it's going to uh, turn on the alarm. Although, let's be honest here, once I shoot a rocket at it, I think the noise will kind of alert everyone <laughs> that this someone is here anyway. But I've got a ton of time and I'm on a location with no reinforcement roll. So I think with my noise so low, maybe I'll spend some time taking this guy out. And then next turn, I can just go in guns blazing. So let's have Santiago use his night vision goggles to reveal this guy. And I think I'll get rid of follow me, because again, with the bonus from the move out mission, I don't need too much help with uh, moving into places. So who we got here? Oh, <laughs> that changes things a bit. It was nobody. So with that, we've still got all of our actions. All right, whatever, let's make this happen. So I choose to make this active. So the gunboat is of course unaware, and we also have to spawn at two points worth. I've got a one on top and then another one on top. And oh, crud. <laughs> Both of these say place two beyond frontmost. So that means these guys aren't on the gunboat space. They're actually chilling out and looking at this Humvee that's uh, just sitting around. So in a way, that's great because I can just uh, stealth into where the gunboat is without too much trouble right now. But when I want to make an exit, oh, but if they roll high, they might just go away. Well, in any case, let's get in here, but not attack the gunboat yet. So Santiago will use his first action to go in. Now he sadly does not have his night vision goggles anymore. So even with his two movement and the two bonus, the four is gone, but he's gonna need three extra cards. So let's get rid of three of I four. And he does have to roll, only a 10 will cause no noise, darn it. And now on a one, two or three, the gunboat will hear something. Oh. Okay, so that changes things some. Because if I send Williams in, he's got a shadow skill of eight, only a 30% chance of moving silently. And it's a really low chance, but if I move in and then the gunboat rolls a one, two, or three again, it'll go from pausing to setting off the alarm. And it has an alarm value of two, which means like uh, my entire plan will be shot. Although actually, I guess worst case scenario, I can just shoot my rocket with Williams' second action. So sure, for his first action, he'll move in. Now he needs one extra card to play the entrance cost and he needs his goggles. So I'll use his uh, one experience to make that happen. So he's out of cards, out of experience. 
But let's see if he can be sneaky. You need an eight, nine, or 10. Yes, so no noise, no need to roll to see if he's noticed. And that does leave Williams with an action left, so let's get some action cards. We got one location marker. I'm not even gonna draw the location card since we don't need any more, but I can still discard it to pay for other things. And we've got some advances to move into places easier. That would have been nice earlier. Uh, move without spending an action. Hold. Oh uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. So man, this is a bunch of crap. Steady aim's the only useful card here. Yeah, and Santiago, he's got two actions left, but you can't move to your extraction point until you've completed the objective or until you've given up on it. So we'll just stop here. Oh crap, reinforcement roll one to six. Why did I move in? <laughs> Don't get a four or less. No, So we've got another friend. Oh my gosh, five search. Okay, well, the good thing about that is I'm about to shoot a rocket off so everyone will know we're there anyway. But yeah, there definitely were some dumb moves made. Uh, the boat does go back to being unaware. And I still have the possibility of people moving. The boat's stationary, so I don't roll for him. But this huge guy who just popped up, hopefully he'll go left. Or he'll go to my extraction point, huh? And the first of the guys who popped up last time, sevens, but he's gonna stay put. And this other guy, come on. Four, oh man, so he's with the gunboat. All right, so kind of yucky. How much noise? Uh, two, four, six, seven. And now that I'm past location three, I'll need to subtract two. So we were up to one, two, three, four, five. But kind of the silver lining here is I'm about to shoot a rocket launcher and that would raise us up by 15 to the top no matter what. So, you know, we should be okay. And time is definitely not the problem here. It's all the noise and the attention. Now let's see, I've got all these useless cards and I've got night vision goggles. So let's reveal some of these guys before we get too far ahead. Maybe some of them will be shadows or just civilians. So we'll use Santiago's goggles to do the one right on our space. And okay, it is passing civilians. And no, they're definitely gonna move to the left next turn and have no search value. That's nice. And we can't even choose to shoot at them until they're going for the alarm, but I'd rather not. That seems kind of terrible. Okay, and Williams' is night vision goggles. Let's see who this really nasty guy is. They're soldiers, but now their search value is only two or one. And they have a, well, they're pretty much gonna stay put on our uh, mode of transportation. Hmm, so this is interesting. Right now, if we don't move at all, and if they don't move, or if this guy goes away, we're probably only getting like four new noise. If I play hold and I don't generate any noise this turn, then I would cancel out all four of that noise and still get my minus two. And then the civilians should be out of the way and hopefully some of these guys might move, but oh, I forgot the, uh, the reinforcement. I mean, we've got a three on top, so pretty low chance of anything reinforcing. So yeah, you know, I think I am just gonna hang out for a turn and hope that things kind of improve before I go uh, crazy with my rocket. Oh crud, I would have had to play at the start of the soldier turn. So never mind. let's go crazy. All right, so Williams is shooting a law rocket at the gunboat. We don't care whether or not he's unaware. Uh, we're not gonna draw a token for this. Don't forget it counts as plus one range, so we're gonna need a six or higher with the three dice we're rolling. But it has penetration five. That means I get plus five to my cover roll, which means it'll automatically penetrate his armor. And with plus three size, I don't need a three or higher to hit it. And hey, we can do one better. How about plus two more to make a one or higher to hit it? So I guess I didn't need two rockets after all, because no matter what I roll, this guy is toast. By the way, barring special effects like the unaware tokens, explosives and spray fire machine guns are the only things that can hit more than one reticle at a time. So here we go, making a lot of noise. And yes, clearly that was actually a pretty good roll even without all the bonuses, but this guy is super duper dead. Now with explosives, noise goes up by five for each die rolled. So yes, the alarm is sounded. So they are on alert, which uh, you'll kind of see what that does in a more meaningful way in a moment. And these civilians absolutely know we're there, but they're not going to attack us or anything. So it doesn't matter too much. We can kind of ignore them. But the nice thing is while the alarm is sounded, these guys are still unaware. So we can actually uh, come in and potentially take them out. Or actually, you know what? We can't right now because uh, we both already used our goggles, which means that uh, Santiago can't get in there. Or that is he couldn't, but Williams for his second action, I think is going to draw more cards. I'll discard everything except squad entry. I'm not even gonna look at what these cards are because I'm gonna play squad entry. It has support one, so I have to discard an extra card. It lets each non-player soldier and squad perform a move without spending an action. The three value goes down to one from the mission. Santiago has enough move for that. So I just need four for the knight, so I'll just discard my entire hand for that. And he now has three actions to try to gun these guys down. But first, let's see if he made some noise. He did, which means I randomly roll for which of these guys heard him. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this guy is fully aware he's there. 
The second that happens with a combat unit, you draw a token. Oh, and he is targeting Santiago. That makes sense. And this is who he would chase after and shoot and all that kind of fun stuff. But this guy doesn't know Santiago's there yet, although, I mean, he pretty much will in a second. So actually, with that in mind, Santiago is going to shoot at this unaware guy first because he can still get the bonus from him. So he draws a token and we got the best one killed in action. No reload. So no need to roll. He's just defeated. And hey, it was a passing soldier. So uh, Santiago gets one experience. This guy would normally get a chance to hear something happening, but he already knows Santiago is there. So Santiago has got two chances to shoot this guy, which are just going to be straight up normal attacks. All right, let's roll for our first one. He's got four cover, which is pretty nasty. And Santiago, remember when he's unhurt, needs a five to get a kill. Oh my gosh. So that is a kill in action, and I think he still gets a suppressed token, even though he knows that I'm around because of the confusion. I don't think it said anything about uh, them being aware, canceling that. Whatever, let's go for it again with his second shot. <laughs> what is going on? Santiago, you have been just sitting around biding your time and you were a monster. So it is two more experience for Santiago. Remember, we need to both get to the Humvee and then keep it clear for two soldier turns in a row. Yeah, pretty great turn there. My attacks went clear really well. Let's see if we get any reinforcements here. Remember, it's a three on top, so we would need that. Darn it. Now, despite the alarm going off, as you'll see in a second, kind of like the base gets aware of us in a staggered fashion. So this guy's actually still going to come out unaware. And you know, I'm actually not sure what to do with a civilian because I don't think he's going to, he can't attack us. And like, he doesn't need to go for the alarm anymore. I'm just going to roll for his regular movement and have him get out of there. I'm not sure if that was right, but I don't think he would hang around to get shot. Okay, noise goes up by three for this guy. would go down two for our activity level, but that just keeps it at the top. But now here's how the alarm progresses things. The first time that the alarm is sounded, you put these little awareness tokens on your mission space and the next location over. And you spawn one of these nasty reaction forces who definitely know you are there on the second spot. Targeting Santiago, they know how dangerous he is. And at the end of each next turn, we're gonna activate another location and put another reaction force. And the key thing is anybody on these locations becomes fully aware. So that means like the uh, word of the alarm is being passed along. Well, one nice thing that happens, but only the first time the alarm's been sounded is the confusion value comes into play. So eight confusion means we lower the alarm two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. This just represents that like everyone's running around, they know something's going on, but they don't know where we are. You know, I forgot to roll for movement for the new guy. Hopefully he goes left. Yes. All right, that's gonna just about guarantee a win for us because I don't think anyone can even possibly get to the Humvee to stop us from leaving. Our timer does go down to four, but this should be pretty quick. We just got to get Williams over there for his first action. He'll get some cards. And for his second action, he'll move in. Uh, he can actually use one of Santiago's experience to pay for the night vision goggles. And then he pays the entrance. So I guess he didn't really need the cards. Yeah, Santiago's just chilling. All right, so no reinforcement roll because we're on a spot with no reinforcement, the vehicle. No one can attack us because the reaction forces, the only ones that are fully aware, need a zero to one range. The civilians, again, I'm just going to get rid of because I don't really know what they're doing anyway. Let's roll for these unaware guys. They're gonna stay where they are, which means they'll know about us in a second. The reaction force moves one towards its target when they can't shoot. We adjust noise and actually nobody's found us, so it goes down two back into green. But we get another noise token here and another reaction force popping up. They're gonna try to hunt us down, but it is too late because we do a little dance with all our actions and then we end our second soldier turn on the Humvee and we just drive away. So there you go, that was Warfighter Shadow War. I think that was a pretty successful stealth mission. I mean, what, I think we fired our weapons a grand total of five or six times. If you enjoyed the playthrough, go check out my review. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.